Hello, science teachers. Welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, teaching science and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And this chart right here is awesome. It's a decision tree my students and I created to determine if I should eat dessert tonight. For example, did I exercise today? If the answer is no, then don't eat dessert. In this episode, I show you how I develop these with my students and more importantly, how we use these in a science lesson. Handouts for this episode can be found at realsciencechallenge.com EP17. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm using decision trees to teach and practice model making. Now, not all models need to be physical models. Food webs and nutrient water cycles are conceptual, pen and paper models of what's happening. But all good models have the same qualities, qualities I call RPM. They're representative of observations. They're predictive and testable, and they're modifiable if new information arises. For example, in a food web, which represents relationships between plants and animals, predator and prey, if we were to remove one, we could predict what would happen to the others. A decision tree is a simple way to create a conceptual model. What makes it so simple is that it uses yes and no questions to come to an answer to a larger question. For example, let's go back to the decision tree my students and I created together. The overarching question is, should I eat dessert? And we break it down into smaller questions like, did I exercise today? Which, depending on if you answer yes or no, leads you to an answer like, don't eat, or leads you to another question like, have I eaten it before? And again, the yes or no leads you to either the answer, eat it, or yes, to another question, which says, does it taste good? And of course, yes or no leads you to more decisions or more answers. And this is a really simple way of creating a conceptual model with your students by using decision trees. Now, let me show you how I used decision trees recently in a science lesson. Every year, my grade 10 students need to learn six types of chemical reactions. The information is usually summarized on a table in a textbook with the type and general structure of each reaction. Now, students, when given any chemical reaction, need to be able to categorize the reaction correctly as one of the six reactions. Now, this year, I got students to create decision trees to streamline the process and map out their thinking when identifying reactions. The overall question to the decision tree is, what chemical reaction is this? And through a series of other questions, students can get to the right category, like synthesis or combustion. This decision tree is representative of what they're thinking and how they're problem solving, and we can test to see if what they created is right or wrong. And that's one way I mark this decision tree for this assignment. Now think of where else you can use decision trees in your science classroom. I'm thinking of using it again when I teach the cell and getting students to identify different cell organelles or cell types. I'm also thinking about using chemistry to identify between mixtures and solutions, but think where else you can use it. It's almost limitless. Anyway, that's it for this episode. If you've tried or I'm trying this with your class, please let me know how it went in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and remember to science everywhere, every day.